Okay, we're back. Our stout has now fermented, and earlier today I pulled out uh, that growler that we saved from our brew, pitched some yeast into it, and I've let it get into a high Kreuzen stage. You can tell uh, by the uh, all the yeast has gone to the top, and it is actually fermenting in the growler. When you do this, make sure that you uh, leave the top a little loose so that it can vent. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding this. Uh, into this cask along with the finished fermenting beer from that fermenter. And then I will bung it up and uh, we'll let it go through a secondary fermentation for about two days and then we will store it in the cellar until it's ready. Okay, now I've taken this tube, I've cleaned and sanitized it. You can make one of these, it's just a basic beer tube with a tri-clamp to a quarter inch hose barb. You can use it for all kinds of different things. And I've got it set up uh, to go into here, but before I do, I'm going to clear out the racking arm, because uh, here's the bottom of the tube right here. Uh, bottom of the fermenter, but we have this racking port here that kind of points down, and I want to clear some of the old yeast and things that might be might be in there from the fermentation before I rack the finished green beer into this uh, cask. So I'm just going to pull this out, and I'm going to turn it on, and just, just kind of spit out a little, a little of that chunky stuff. I know how to do it. Okay, and back in. A little hard to do with one hand. Now I'm going to grab my stuff here. And let's see. I said it's hard to do this with one hand. I'm just I'm gonna put about this is a pin, and I don't have an Erlenmeyer flask. But I'm gonna put about 175 milliliters of actively fermenting wort into here. I'm gonna cover that back up so nothing comes in, and then. I'll just open my valve and my blow-off tube. I need to release some of the pressure. There we go. And I'm going to let this fill. Um, generally speaking, if I'm doing a firkin, I use about 400 milliliters of actively fermenting wort. Uh, if I'm doing a pin like this, about 175. And uh, I'm guessing, like I said, I don't have my Erlenmeyer flask, but cask ale is not an exact science. It's real, by the way. So uh, we will just fill this up and uh, take it from there, and then we'll bung it up. Okay, it's about full now. I like to leave a little bit of a headspace in there. Um, so it's just not full all the way. We'll pull this out. I like to always spill a little bit of beer on myself. Put that up for now. And then I keep the bung. This is a plastic firkin, or pin. Pretty inexpensive. They're BPE free. Uh, I like the metal ones better, but if you use something like this, instead of a wood, they make these plastic bungs, which I've just soaked in uh, sanitizer. So I will set that there for right now. And then the trick is, uh, I find them harder, the plastic ones, to pound in because there, there just tends to be a little bit of a bounce. Let me just say this. I didn't add any finings into this. I would have done that first thing. Um, because it's a dark beer, I don't need to fine it. Uh, it's not going to be clear anyway. I mean, it'll be clear, but you won't be able to see it because it's black, basically. And I didn't dry hop it because it's a foreign-style stout. Uh, I made a uh, IPA recently, and what I what I like to do is I use those uh, those uh, paint straining bags, little ones, and I put my pellet hops in it, and I just kind of stuff them down in there after I find it, 
and then I add my Kreuzen, and then I add my, my finished beer, and then bung it up, and it's ready to go. Nice dry hop. But this one was pretty easy because it's a dark beer. I didn't have to mess with that. So now I'll go ahead and bung this. Okay, now I've uh, gone ahead and whacked that bung in. Uh, it always gives me grief. So I'm just going to stand it up, kind of mix it a little bit. And I'll spray it down, clean up my mess a little bit. There you go. And then our brewery is pretty cool. Uh, if it was really warm, I'd put this in a cooler place. You don't want it too cold because of the fermentation temperature of the yeast we use. Can't take real cold temperatures. But I'm just going to basically set this aside right here in the corner. Uh, kind of out of the way and it'll stay there for two days or so. And then I'll put it in a nice cool place uh, and let it age for about two weeks and it should be ready to go. Uh, next I'll show you a tapping of another pin of an IPA just to show you uh, how we do that. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. 